Well, folks, as you can see, I got my dad standing next to me. We've traveled to Vancouver Island. The cohos are in. Hopefully, we're going to get a few Chinook, and I know we'll get some bottom fish. So you folks stay tuned. We're going to have a lot of information for you. Hopefully, we're going to have a good time out here in the salt. Angler's Experience is proudly sponsored by Crestliner, leader by innovation. Strike King Lure Company, number one in fishing lures. Setter Rods, the American way. Sidewinder Planer Boards, fight the fish, not the board. Vibe Lure Company, blade baits for serious anglers. Tobler Marina, your one-stop boat shop. Easy Loader. All boat trailers are not created equal. Oxart, your single source supplier. Lincoln Electric, the welding experts. And Honda Marine, it's all about power. You got him? Oh, come on. Oh, he's there. He's taking a line. About half spool. If you do want, I'll come around. Real or real? Still out there, Dad? Yeah. Oh, yeah, he's out there. Okay. I gotta come by. He's there. Nice shit like that. You got the black mouth. Got the black mouth. Yeah. All right. All right, Dad. Good job. Beauty. I want to talk to you for a minute about the baits that we're running here today. And some people refer to them as hoochies, some people refer to them as squids, and there's a bunch of different companies that make them. But what I want to cover with you is how to make the squid bait better. And I like to buy mine in bulk. I just buy them like this. I buy them, these are silver hoard squids. Um, and I buy them in a six pack, 10 pack. You know, sometimes if we got a hot lure, buy them in a big pack of 25 or, or more. Um, but you buy them like this, and they're just a bulk squid. And what, when you buy them when they're pre-made, they're going to look like this guy right here. They're going to have a double octopus hook set up. They're going to have a little bumper bead inside right here. And then they're going to have the squid slid down on top like that. And when you buy them, this is what they're going to look like when they're pre-made. 
The reason why I like to buy them in bulk is because I like to do a few modifications to them. Here's one that I made. This is one that we're running here today. And basically what I like to do is I've got the same squid right here. But what I've done is I've made a few changes. The first thing that I've done is instead of running two one-aught octopus hooks, what I do is I run a single five-aught octopus hook and I just snell it on there to my leader. And then I run three bumper beads in red. And what these three beads do is they make up for that double hook. They help push this single hook back towards the back of the bait so you don't get those short strikes. And I like to run them in red. Red is just a great color. It's a great attractant. And then what I do, they've got these tube inserts, and you gotta look around for them in your tube section. You'll find them with the squids. And what it is, it's just this guy right here, and it's got a glow head on it. They come in a couple different styles. Here's one here, chrome and clear. Here's a red one. But what we do is we slide that on, and this is a pearl, and I prefer the pearl. It just puts off a pink-white color. And then what I do is I slide my squid down onto here, push that tube up inside, and now I've got an angler's experience squid versus a store-bought squid. And you can see how much more color is in that bait. The single hook right here, we're catching a lot of fish, so I want to be able to release them. We're pinching the barbs down. With the double hook, they get it stuck in their eye and their head, and they tear a fish up real bad. So make sure, run that single 5 out like that, add that color, it's going to make that bait that much better. Double header, guys. A couple of decent coho. Step up here and grab the net. Just now. Oh, no, I lost mine. Did you lose yours? Yep. Did you lose them, Dad? Yeah. This is a big one. Here, Dad. This is a big one. Big silver. <laughs> Oh yeah! Look at there, guys. That's a big silver. Right on. All right, Dad, bring him in. There's a good one. Yeah. That's a beauty. Look at that, guys. Seal got a hold of him. Right there. It's a nice coho. Go about eight pounds, seven, eight pounds. Beauty. All right, let's put him in the locker. Fish on. Man, he's a fighter. Oh, no, he's still there. Oh, he's a fighter. Nice one, guys. Yeah. yeah. Thick one. Folks, don't get any better than this. Just off to our left over here, we got two blue whales working the shoreline. Big coho salmon. It's a little bit bumpy out here, but I tell you what, it sure is worth it. It's beautiful. Still there? Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Come on, Dad. What do we got here? Oh, it's a big coho, Dad. Big coho, I think. King, it's a king, it's a king. Oh 
Oh, yeah, Dad. Come on, buddy. Roll down. Oh, it's a huge coho. Huge coho. Huge, huge, huge. Huge coho. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> Let me see. That is a huge coho, Dad. Holy smokes. <laughs> Monster. Holy man. That is a beast. Holy smokes. Oh. Wow. Oh. Fires. Fires. Before we pop. Folks, this is a this is a massive, massive coho right here, guys. Okay. Okay, Dad. Look at that, guys. That, my friends, is a big coho. Good job, Pa. Look at how thick that dude is. That's just as good as catching a king, if not better, guys. Catch one that big. Whew. Let's get a weight on him here. That's a big coho right there. Oh. Guys, that fish is almost 16 pounds. Dad, that is a prize, buddy. What a beastie coho. <laughs> Beautiful fish. All right, let's put him in a cooler. I get a lot of questions on different types of knots, and this is one that seems to baffle a lot of people, is the snell knot. And the snell knot is very simple, and I'm going to show you how to tie it here. What we'll basically do, I've got a big hook and my piece of rope. And when I tie my leaders, what I like to do is I like to tie with six feet of line. So I'll pull out six feet of leader, cut it. And then what that enables me to do is I have a long leader and then I can cut it down to 48 inches or 36 inches depending on how aggressive the fish are. So I start out with my six foot piece. And all you do, it's real simple. Here's our hook. I come through the eyelet. Just like so, all I've done is come through the eyelet with the back end of that tag. Then I grab my front piece of my leader and I wrap it back towards the back of the hook and I wrap it around the shank and I usually go six to seven times with a monofilament. Now here's the tricky part. What you do is you take this line and you put a twist in it. See how I'm throwing that twist in there and I lay it flat on the shank like this. Now. I've still got my piece that I've been twisting with right here, and I've got this piece laying out the back of the shank. Now here's the tricky part. What you need to do is continue wrapping with the piece that you started wrapping with, pushing that tag back through, just like this. And you'll go three or four times here, five or six. I usually like to do six in the front, six in the back, but with this heavy line, I'm only gonna do three or four. Okay, so now I've wrapped over the top. Now, hold that loop. Pull it down tight, just like so. Pull both pieces down tight. Now what you want to do is you've got your line like this. So what you want to do is take that tag into your leader and come back down through the eye of that hook. Now what you'll do, like so, take your clippers, cut that line, and now You've got your snell knot right there. Simple knot, guys. Here we go, guys. Not a giant fish, but it's a coho. And we're allowed to keep one native and one hatchery. The way you can tell, if you look right back here on the back by my thumb, his adipose fin has been clipped. That tells you he comes from a hatchery. If the adipose fin is up, that means he's native. You see the difference right there. Good 
good one, Dad. Hang on, everybody. He's a good one, Pop. We're gonna throw him in the cooler, have ourselves some sandwich for dinner tonight, guys. What a beauty. I wanna help you make decisions when you're choosing flashers. And what flashers really have to deal with is light conditions. In the morning time, when we go out and you get out there before the sun's even come up and it's still dark, what you wanna do is you wanna go with your glow pat pattern flashers. And this is a green speckle, and then this is a, a reflective glow here. And we'll start out with these until the sun comes up. And then once the sun starts to poke up, we still don't have real good light, but we've got some good light. What we'll do is we'll switch over to these chrome right here. Now, as you can see, this one on my right hand's caught a lot of fish. This is just a straight chrome model here, chrome and green. Green's always a great color. But once the light comes up and it starts to get bright, what'll happen is these will put off too much light at times. And what you'll want to do when you get to that, say you got the midday sun, it's bright, the water's not real rough, so they're getting a lot of light into the water. These real reflective ones like this will actually deter the fish. So what you want to do is switch over. These are also reflective, but they got a scale finish on them. And what that does is it throws light out, but not as well as the straight chrome. And then once you start winding down into the afternoon and it starts dumping back to where you're getting less and less light, you would go to these guys again. Once your sun starts to go down and the sun is setting and you got the low light, go back to your glow baits right here, your glow flashes right here. And that's the key when making the right flasher decisions. Just match it up to your light. Another little trick with your baits when you're using these hoochies, one is you want to use the light conditions the same way that you've done with your flashers. In the low light conditions, We've got a few different glows that we run right here. A couple different colors and a speckle back and a white. And then once you get that light starting to come up, what you'll want to do is switch over. These are non-glow. The only thing glow on these are the eyes. Um, pink's a great color. Anything with the green and blue for us always seems to work. This one's been our most productive right here. Just a little bit of chrome with a blue back and it's got those glow eyes. But match those up when you're running the glow flashers, make sure you're running the glow bait and when you're not running the non-glow flashers, run the, the non-glow baits. The other thing that you want to do, this is a great product right here. It's called Bait Butter. It's made by Procure. And what's neat about this stuff, with these hoochies, you got to remember they have no scent at all. So what we like to do is take some of this bait butter and it's a paste right here. And what you do is you just put a little bit on your finger like so and then you just rub it across the bait. And what this does versus using an oil is this stays on a lot longer. And it seems to work much better. You don't have to bring your baits in as often to recoat them like you would with an oil. But get yourself some of this bait butter. We like to use it in an anchovy, herring, and a sardine. And we just kind of mix it up on each pole and we find out which one's working and then we go with that. But remember to keep your colors matching with the flasher and the light conditions and make sure to put some bait butter on there and you catch more fish that way. Dick, this is a big fish, man. Forward, Dad. Okay, head out. Huh? Head out. Okay, that's a dodger. Get the net, get the net, get the net. Oh my 
my god, Dad. Hurry, hurry. There he is, Dad. Yep. All right. Woo! A big, beautiful Chinook. We'll call that a shared fish between Dad and myself. <laughs> Beauty. Nice fish. Nice fish. Well, folks, I think this is a fish we're going to call it a trip on. Dad and I have been up here for the last five days. We probably caught 150 salmon. The Chinook weren't in like we'd hoped. We were a little bit behind, but hey, we caught a whole bunch of coho. Did you have a good time, Dad? Oh, yeah, and don't want to go home. Me De either. Definitely don't want to go home, but <laughs> we, got, we got a 16-hour drive in the morning to get back home, so we're going to load things up tonight and get up early and head home. So as always, I want to thank you for watching. Look forward to seeing you next week.